Okay, welcome back. This is part four of making this old school style shoot 'em up in Unity. I promised last time, now that we have bullets, we have enemies flying around, we can start blowing stuff up. There is one thing I want to do first. My wife just started learning pixel art and decided to contribute to these videos. Uh, she was kind enough to create some of the enemy ship sprites you see here. So I'll be sure to update the uh, asset zip file and relink it in the description of this video. All right, so let's move these new sprites into the assets folder. There you go. All right, I'm gonna take one of these sprites, enemy ship one, and I'm gonna attach it to the prefab of enemy type one. All right, so let's go in there, go to the sprite. Uh, instead of isometric diamond, we're just gonna choose enemy ship one. Perfect. Now right, let's back out here. How do those look? All right, nice, that actually looks really good. Cool. And as for this uh, enemy ship, the other enemy ship sprite, I'm gonna reserve this one for later in the next video. Enemies are actually gonna be shooting back at us. So then we'll be able to make two types of enemies, some that shoot, which will be this one, and then some that don't, which is this one. All right, let's go back to the uh, enemy type one prefab and let's make some modifications so that it could actually get hit by the bullets. All right, one thing that it's gonna definitely need is, uh, is a rigid body 2D. Uh, be careful not to pick rigid body because that's gonna be part of the 3D physics, so pick 2D rigid, rigid body 2D, so it's part of the 2D physics. And all of our physics that we're doing in this game are in 2D. And the reason that we even need this rigid body is because the enemies are gonna be the ones getting hit by the bullets and in Unity to receive <clears throat> any collision events, unless you're writing your own collision, you have to have a rigid body on your object. All right, we're gonna change a couple of settings here. First of all, we're gonna change it from dynamic to kinematic. And this prevents the rigid body from being affected by the ongoing physics simulation, stuff like gravity and other forces that are around, because in this game, all of our movement is actually manually coded by us. Another important value that we're gonna check here is this collision detection dropdown. There's basically just two options here, discrete and continuous, and we're gonna actually change this to continuous. The reason that we're using continuous is because of this collision detection concept known as tunneling. This is basically when an object is moving so fast from one frame to the next, it can move such a, such a far distance that it basically goes past the object that it might collide with in the time span of one frame of the game. And discrete collision detection only checks the exact position of the object on the specific frame where it's checking to determine uh, collision detection. Uh, when you change it to continuous, it's gonna actually iterate over every position that that object could possibly have been between the two frames as well. And that way you get, you remove that, that tunneling where objects could pass through each other in between frames because it's doing the checking many times on a single frame, basically knowing the object is gonna be at this position in the next frame. So it's gonna check all the positions in between those two from this frame to the next frame. So it's actually slightly less performant than discrete collision detection. However, this is a very simple 2D game. And because we have bullets that are moving potentially very fast, depending on how you, how you want this to be set up, if they're moving fast enough, you're definitely gonna want continuous collision detection. All right, that's it for the rigid body. Now we'll just need to add a box collider as well. Uh, box collider, and again, pick 2D there. And then we can adjust the size of it a little bit. So let's go down here, set the X, just right about the size of the ship. It can be a little bigger because, well, we always wanna give the player the benefit of the doubt there. Let's adjust the Y position there a little bit. It's a little off center. There, that's good enough. Now, in order for Unity to know that the bullet can collide with this, the bullet's also gonna need a box collider. So let's go over there. Box collider 2D, same thing. Uh, let's make sure that this size should be much smaller uh, here. There. And right about there. Now I could have used a circle collider, but knowing that our game just uses only box colliders just makes things easier. And the bullets are really moving so fast anyway, it'll be difficult to determine the difference between a box collision and a circle collision. The only other thing we need to do on this box collider is check off this is trigger. And this is just because of how we'll be detecting collisions in the scripts. Uh, a trigger doesn't actually need a rigid body either. Uh, as long as the object doing the collision detection, receiving the collision events does have one, which the enemy ships do. So then we'll just go back over to our enemy ship and we'll add a new script for anything that's gonna get hit by our bullets, right? So this is just gonna be something dist 
indestructible. New script, destructible, got it. And really the only thing we're gonna do in this script is implement the on trigger enter 2D call. So on trigger enter, uh, again, paying attention to the 2D there. And on trigger enter will tell you anytime another object with a collider where the is trigger was set has entered one of our colliders on this game object. And since we know that we wanna be destroyed by bullets, we'll just look for that bullet script on the collision object itself. Um, so bullet collision get component. And if it happens to exist, we'll go ahead and destroy ourselves. And then we'll also go ahead and do the work of uh, destroying the bullet as well. So we don't have some overpowerful bullet that just goes through the screen and annihilates everything. All right, that should actually be it. So let's go ahead and test it out. Let's play and fire some bullets. All right, there they go. They're getting destroyed. And that's, that's that. Um, so let's go back to the scene here. You're going to see one interesting thing happen that, um, so let, let's say if I just take these two enemy groups and I move them back a bit, like here, test that out again, right? My bullets are actually blowing them up before they're even entering the, the scene, right? Well, I mean, they're technically in the scene, but they're not within the camera view yet. So as far as I know, when they, <laughs> they never even entered, right? Because I blew them up. Uh, so that's a little unfair, right? So one simple way to prevent this is we can just create a Boolean flag inside of the, um, the destructible script that basically says, if this object is not within the camera's view yet, just ignore the collision detection, right? So let's see what that actually means, right? So I'm going to assume that we're never changing the overall size of our camera here. So I'll just take this one guy here and put his position, let's say roughly once they're at about this position, right? That means they're in the camera. So that's on the X axis four point, can I get it to 4.3 maybe? Yeah, let's just go 4.3, right? Let's just undo that. And then let's go to destructible here, our destructible script, and we'll just say is activated or can be destroyed. And that'll be false by default. And we'll go ahead and say here, if, if you can't can be destroyed, then we'll just go ahead and return and not, and not perform this operation here. And then uh, in update, if your uh, transform dot position position dot x is less than that four point three value that we figured out, then go ahead and say can be destroyed, right? And we'll see if that works. So basically, anything outside of the camera should not actually be allowed to be destroyed, right? And that seemed to work. Nope, didn't work at all. Uh, that <laughs> that's because I was measuring the 4.3 from within this um, group here. So let me go ahead and take that out again, right? And now I can measure its position more accurately, right? And I can say it's something like 17, right? We'll just go with 17, and that's actually correct. Okay. So that's 17. I know. Let's go ahead and try that again. All right. Nobody's dying, and now everybody's dying. Perfect. Now we're blowing up our enemies. And that's exactly what we set out to do. All right, that takes care of our pretty brief tutorial, actually. We successfully introduced collision detection and destructibles into our game. So in the next video, as I said, we'll be taking advantage of that other enemy type, and then we'll go ahead and make those shoot, and we'll be doing some interesting stuff with how you can manipulate shoot timers to get uh, various different types of uh, bullet shooting patterns as well from the enemies. So thank you again. Go ahead and like the video. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. And take care. Bye.